What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video in Brett's Garage. I'm Brett and in today's video I'm going to do some dyno testing to compare the difference between Shell 91 V-Power and Chevron 94 Octane. November 2018, I had the car down at Paradigm Auto to do some dyno testing using Chevron 94 Octane. The results were not the greatest. The horsepower and torque curve line on the dyno grab shows wavy lines or power interruptions mid RPM, almost like engine knocking or the ECU pulling timing. I'm not sure what those wavy lines were caused by mid RPM. However, ever since that dyno test in November 2018, I stopped using Chevron 94 Octane and started only using Shell 91 V Power. In November, using Chevron 94 Octane, the Golf R put down 232 horsepower and 236 foot pounds of torque. If you're wondering why that number is so much lower than the 292 horsepower the Golf R is rated for, it's because that rating does not take into consideration drivetrain horsepower loss. If you're not familiar with drivetrain horsepower loss, it's the loss of power between the engine flywheel and the wheels. It takes a certain amount of power to overcome the friction of the bearings, the gears meshing, to turn the drive shafts, the axles, and the wheels. The dyno, or dynamometer, simultaneously measures the torque and rotational speed at the wheels. The results given is the actual number of horsepower and torque that is making contact with the road. Before heading down to the dyno, I'm going to wash the car, put some air in the tires, and get some Shell 91V power in the tank. I just arrived at the Shell station, and I also just rolled over 34,000 kilometers. Just before I fill up with Shell 91V power, I just wanted to mention something about these octane numbers that are given to the fuel. Here in Canada and the US, we use an anti-knock index or an AKI. In Germany and other parts of the world, they use a research octane number, and other places of the world, they use a motor octane number. The anti-knock index is a combination between RON plus MON divided by two. Anti-knock or knock resistance is the fuel's ability to not self-ignite while the fuel is being compressed. A higher octane fuel does not contain more energy or better combustion, it simply just has more resistance to pre-ignition or engine knocking. Here in Canada, the Shell 91 is approximately equivalent to RON 96. I just added 23 liters and I used Shell 91 V-Power. So I just arrived at Paradigm Auto. We're about to get the car up on the dyno here.
that's it for today's dyno testing. The results are quite a bit different than they were last time. Shell 91 V-Power outperformed the Chevron 94 Octane by approximately 31 horsepower and 36 foot-pounds of torque. Now I know that might seem a little hard to believe that there's such a difference in quality of fuel. However, there's a lot of variables that I did not take into consideration. One of the variables being that the Chevron 94 Octane was purchased in November and the Shell 91 was purchased in June. Chevron and Shell gasoline may add different additives in the winter months versus the summer months. There are also many other variables I haven't considered, but what I think is important here is that the much smoother horsepower and torque curve on the dynograph. With Chevron 94, you can see the horsepower curve has some power interruptions as it climbs in RPM. Just before 6,000 RPM, you can see the horsepower line drops off. The torque curve using the Chevron fuel peaks at 2,900 RPM and slowly tapers off. With the Shell 91 V-Power, you can see the horsepower curve is much smoother with fewer power interruptions. You can also see the power does not drop off until after 6,000 RPM. The Shell torque curve is also smoother and seems to hold a flatter line when climbing in RPM. Just before ending this video, I wanted to share with everybody that while I was at Volksfest 2019, I won this gift card to Paradigm Auto. I'm super excited about winning this gift card, so I want everybody to please comment below what you want to see me test on the dyno with my Golf R. One of the things I would like to test is if colder air makes a difference. On the second dyno pole, you can see the intake air temperatures are very high. While driving on the road, anytime the intake air temperature goes above 35 degrees Celsius, there is a very noticeable decrease in power. One of the modifications I would like to do to my Golf R is a vented carbon fiber hood. The vents would allow the excess heat under the hood to escape, thus providing you a colder intake air temperature. Another modification I want to do is a cold air intake. There are many different brands to choose from, such as CTS Turbo, Integrated Engineering, Forge, APR, Cobb, VWR, and many others. That's it for today's video. Thanks everybody on the Vancouver Art Club for sending in a picture of your intake. Thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. It really helps my channel to grow and I'll see you in the next video.